Hello everybody, this is Tacoma Comics and these are my hip hop variant covers. Welcome back. We're going to start off with what I call a proto cover. <laughs> Not exactly a hip hop cover, but I always think of this one. Dazzler 33 by Bill Senkovich, who we will see later, as kind of the uh, proto hip hop cover because it does a lot of the things that hip hop covers do. Obviously, it references popular music, uh, in this case, Michael Jackson's Thriller, um, but specifically because it's got the artwork and it keeps the name of the uh, the name of the comic, and then it also has a play on words on the name of the album, Thriller Chiller. Um, that's something that you're going to see happens all the way through most of the hip hop covers. So even though this is clearly not a hip hop cover, Michael Jackson Thriller was a pop dance song. Um, I think this has a, a nice place in Marvel's history of hip hop covers. Uh, next one I want to show is not Marvel and is not um, a hip hop variant cover, but it totally fits into the genre. Right here we have uh, Hip Hop Family Tree by Ed Pisker, excuse me, I had a brain fart for a second. Uh, Ed Pisker does great work um, with this whole series. This is the history of hip hop. Um, he goes way back, digs deep into the South Bronx in 1978 when DJ Cool Herc was uh, spinning records in the park. They used to grab power illegally and rewire it into uh, their, their stereo setups and their speakers. And he would just start to spin records and um, he was the first, I believe, to start rapping over the breaks in the records, and that is the history of hip hop and how it started. Uh, you can find this online on Boing Boing. Um, you can get collected versions or you can get the comics. These are just absolutely, absolutely great treasures to have if you are a hip hop fan. Ed Pisker, um, if you read his um, X Men Grand Design, what he does with hip with the X Men, he does with hip hop in, in this series. Sorry, it's really early. I recorded this last night and I had to junk it because I didn't like the way I did it. Then my dog got me up really early. I went to bed late because of the fireworks and I'm tired. Here we go. I uh, picked this up a couple months back. This is just uh, kind of a compilation of all the hip-hop covers from the first, uh, first release or first year that they did them. You can see 4, 8, 12. 16, 20, 24, 25, 26 covers that year. Um, and it's kind of nice to have just to thumb through and look at. Uh, clearly, they've done a lot more since then, but these are the original 26. Pretty neat. Um, trying to go sort of in chronological order from when the hip hop albums were released, uh, but I might make a mistake here or there. First one up is from 1987. Eric B. and Rakim's Paid in Full becomes Spider-Man and Deadpool Paid and Full. You'll see over here to the side, I have a little graphic, and I got the idea for the graphic from uh, JP Budget Collects when he does his um, his six weeks back show, so thanks for that. Um, and this was uh, old school hip hop for sure. Uh, the beats are sparse, the beat is slow, the rhymes are like the RC Cola uh, ad, and if you knew, know what I'm talking about, first of all, you're old, and second of all, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's like what I like to call white guy rap. Dun 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 and the end of each line rhymes, and that's where I think a lot of uh, people think hip hop stopped and don't realize it's progressed massively as an art form in the last 35, 40 years, and it's just pretty damn amazing. But anyway, uh, one of the great classic albums of hip hop old school. Uh, interestingly enough, you talk about old school, I don't know that there is any um, hip hop variant cover for two of my favorite bands. Uh, either Run DMC or the Beastie Boys. But, kind of breaking away from the old school, 1988's Straight Outta Compton, um, well, this is out of order, this was 88, but it did not get known until a few years later. Uh, NWA Straight Outta Compton, I think a lot of people um, 
like this for various reasons. Um, I was in high school when it came out, but I first heard of it my freshman year of college because uh, it wasn't being played on the uh, new wave radio I was listening to in Long Island in 1980-89. But boy, when I went to college in September of 89 as a 17-year-old, um, this is being played all over the place. And I think that there was a lot of tee-hee-hee value, uh, fuck the police and um, songs like that. And uh, kind of like a lot of people a lot of white people like me, a little, I wasn't a frat bro for sure, but um, missing the point of the lyrics, the deeper meanings of lyrics, you think about F the police and think about the lyrics, um, F the police coming straight from the underground, young brother got it bad because he's brown, not the other color, so the police think they have the authority to kill a minority. I mean, you know, you take that from 1989 and you connect it to Black Lives Matter rallies this, uh, this spring, and what's going on, and clearly people didn't believe, uh, and I apologize for not believing them back then when NWA was saying it, because everyone's like, oh, well, they cursed, and they've got the N-word in their name, and they're 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 gangster rappers, so they, they obviously are breaking the law. Um, and that was a pretty typical uh, thing to think if you were a certain uh, paler complexion, and I apologize for my 19 year old self <laughs> believing that way, but uh, it took an education of my own teaching the South Bronx for 10 years to realize the truth of things. I think for a lot of us, it took um, body cameras and cell phone video to believe that maybe there is something to this idea that minorities are treated differently by the police. So this is not a BLM diatribe, but I did want to point that out that um, NWA was seeing that a long time ago. Hmm. As you point out, that is an Adam Hughes cover and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the way that, the way that he did that, um, copying the, uh, not copying, homaging the, my gosh, it is like six in the morning. I'm so tired. Homaging NWA's cover. So Slick Rick. Great Adventure Slick Rick from 87. He did claim, did claim that he is the first gangster rapper. I, I, it was really important back then for Ice-T, Slick Rick, NWA, and others to battle for who was the first. I don't think it matters anymore, like many musical battles of old. Um, but uh, yeah, this is Spider-Gwen number one. And what's interesting here is in the album, Slick Rick is coasting on a subway car, which is a thing that is done or was done in New York City um, by kids who have nothing better to do because that's what kids have is nothing better to do riding on subway cars dangerously um, yeah really classic album and really classic cover by the way you'll see the um, graphics I put up have song the song is a song I would play if I wasn't going to get copyright busted for playing songs. Uh, so I kind of forced myself to choose my favorite song from the album. And if I had no idea, I've got huge hip hop gaps. If I had no idea about the song, I went ahead and said, OK, um, I'm going to listen to this album. And I did listen to a lot of the albums and choose a favorite song. This one, I did not have to do that because De La Soul, uh, Three Feet High and Rising was an album that I played incessantly. Uh, Love this album. Love De La Soul. I first heard of them when they opened for Living Color, which was uh, my jam back in like 89 when this album came out. Absolutely loved them. Um, <laughs> the lead singer's name was Chugoy, which is yogurt spelt backwards. And then there's Pasta Noose. And then there was the other guy whom I can't remember. Um, and this is just a, a fabulous album. They were from, from Long Island. They were part of the Native Tongues movement, which was um, a group of rappers who were uh, kind of the opposite, not necessarily of Slick Rick, but they were certainly, uh, they were the hippies to Eric B. and Rakim's um, Down and Dirty. Uh, so you're going to find no gold chains here. You're going to find no kangles here. You're going to find no like leather. You're going to find all soft clothing. You're going to find all black, red, and green colors um, 
on their clothing, on their medallions, on everything. Uh, other bands that were part of that movement were Tribe Called Quest and Jungle Brothers. Um, and they kind of formed a uh, softer side of hip hop might be a way of saying it. And the song that I chose for De La Soul was um, Take It Off, in which they kind of sing and rap about uh, taking off your kangol, taking off all your... Um, traipsings and clothing that was reminiscent of um the earlier <laughs> earlier old school hip-hop uh which sounded funny at the time but in retrospect just sounds really snarky and obnoxious of them so i don't know but loved de la soul loved their first couple of albums followed them through college then as you'll see <laughs> from 1995 on i lost the train of a lot of hip-hop including uh 1996's uh return to 36 chambers uh that Howard the Duck number one repurposed from Old Dirty Bastard. Don't know much about Old Dirty Bastard except that he's a member of Wu-Tang and I will talk about Wu-Tang later. Um, this is his, or this on the actual album was his, uh, what's it called? Uh, food food card, uh, food stamp card, just really funny because, you know, the guy at one point was making a lot of money, but I know he's on this MTV documentary where he uses his food card still, uh, which I thought was hysterical. Um, yeah, I don't know much about him. Listen to the album. It was okay. It wasn't my favorite. Apparently, Return to 36 Chambers references an old um, martial arts movie, which is very much in keeping with what the Wu-Tang did. And we also have a member of the community whom I have to assume got his name, 36 Chamber Studio, from this or the, the martial arts movie that preceded it. If I'm wrong about that, that's okay. That is not why they call me Big Papa, because they do not call me Big Papa. They call Notorious B.I.G., Biggie Small, Big Papa, and the Astonishing Ant-Man number one references that in Ready to Shrink, which is a play on Ready to Die, um... Biggie Smalls, most of us probably remember, died early, got shot, um, and uh, was just one of the biggest rappers ever, one of the greatest um, lyricists and MCs. He could spit rhymes so smoothly. Um, sad to see him go. Uh, would have loved to see what he could have done had he kept going, but here Mark Brooks immortalizes him in this astonishing Ant-Man number one. What's really interesting to note is that there was a lot of, excuse me, there was a lot of controversy when these covers came out at first. There were a lot of people saying that um, they were exploiting hip hop and that, you know, Marvel has maybe not the best legacy with race, but I think you could say that about any American institution um, or most American institutions. And there was a lot of people who were worried that it was just going to be an exploitive move to make more money. Um, I don't know about that. I tend to think that they they did right by the artists and that it is a, uh, a proper melding of art forms. And you have to remember, too, um, comic books and hip hop are kind of intertwined. Uh, the, the story of Rick Rubin... Um, meeting Run D members of Run DMC at NYU and comic books being involved from the very beginning in, in like what they bonded on is is pretty uh, pretty canon now. So I think comic books have been there since the beginning, intertwined in the art form, at least in some tangential way. So I think it's kind of fitting that we have uh fitting that we have this connection here. Um and clearly some of the artists were fans of hip hop because by what they chose, um, they didn't always go for the the um, easy catch. They, they they dug deep, as you'll see in some of these. Uh, this one right here, it's kind of a really good example of what I was talking about with um, Dazzler and the Chiller. Uh, the album was said Fuji's and the score down here, and of course they changed it to Ultimate's The Solution. Um, and this is just... Uh, a seminal album, um, the score with uh, Wyclef Sean and Prize and uh, Lauren Hill. Oh man, Lauren Hill, so amazing. We'll get to her in a moment. Um, and this is just a, a beautiful homage cover right here. Absolutely great, and there's so many good songs in the album. I, I can't choose just one. And right around the same time as that, 1996, Nas was coming up in Brooklyn while a young 
Web Slinger was also coming up in Brooklyn. Miles Morales. This is in Mylar, so it is shining all the way. I apologize about that, but I'm not taking this out of Mylar. Um, wow. Yeah, what else is there to say about Nas? Um, either you know him or you don't. Uh, I just love, 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 love what Adi Grana did on this cover. It's amazing. Um, it's so... It's so much like the original album cover, but it's also um, just so beautiful in, in and of itself. Uh, Nas's first album was the Illmatic. I'm actually a bigger fan of the Stillmatic, which was uh, four or five albums later. Um, that's the one that I first heard uh, when I was teaching South Bronx. We actually used one of those songs, um, I Know I Can, which is kind of this like uplifting spirit of, of uh, African-American children and connecting them to their roots. And I put it in a student video my students made and we won a, <laughs> we won a silly little, I shouldn't say that, we won a video contest and I was really excited that um, my students had done that and that was like where they introduced me to Nas and that was really cool. Remains one of my favorites, just just amazing, amazing rapper. So really great album. Another band that I love, so you can see that my, I had kind of this early connection to hip hop just because it was around, um, you know, break dancing and just the new art form when I was a kid in the 80s. And then I went through college not listening to too much of it, De La Soul a little bit, um, being aware of NWA and a few others. Um, uh, but by the end of college, Cypress Hill, um, obviously, uh, love of Run DMC. But then my next wave of what I got into was really through teaching the South Bronx, walking to the subway after school every day and seeing like just guys selling burned CDs, illegally burned CDs on the side of the street for $5. I'm not saying that I bought those illegally burned CDs, um, but you know, my students introduced me to a lot of music and a lot of it was cheaply and readily available. Um, something that I actually paid for, and I think this shows how old I am, this might be one of the last albums that I actually purchased in the store. Illadelph Half-Life by The Roots. If you're not familiar with The Roots with um, Questlove and the rest of the band, they are renowned for playing all their own instruments. Um, they're also the, the house band. I don't know if that's the right term for it, for uh, Jimmy Kimmel's show. Um, Jimmy Fallon's show, excuse me. I knew I got that wrong. Um, and they're an amazing, amazing band. And this is an amazing, amazing album. Philadelphia Half-Life by The Roots. Also, also one of my favorite covers because of the A in the background, the Avengers A. Sorry about that glare. I just think that's really cool the way they repurposed that from the, the original artwork and turned it into the Avengers A. Really great. Um, I'm going to try the next one. That's going to be too dark, right? Yeah, you're not going to see that. You still get glare from outside. Forget that. Um, Ed Pisker shows up again with um, an homage cover to Camp Lowe's Uptown Saturday Night, which I've never heard of, um, don't know, listened to it, and I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not know this? How have I not heard this album before? It's, it's amazing. So uh, if you want to listen to some music that you may not know, or maybe you do, and I'm just ignorant, and that's perfectly possibly capable uh camp low uptown saturday night uh really really great album uh band i think it was their debut release back in 1997 and here you go ed pisker memorializing them the same artwork he uses for the x-men grand design um, that he did which is really cool next up is one of my all-time melding of favorites you all know me you all know that one of my favorite superheroes especially of the modern era is Miss Marvel. And one of my favorite albums when uh, when I first met my wife, it was right around the time that it was big and we played the hell out of it in the car, was The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, um, which Jenny Frizen in her indomitable style does a beautiful homage here to in the education of Kamala Khan. Um, not enough can be said about this album, and it's all been said before um, by people who are more eloquent and knowledgeable than I am, but it is truly one of the best albums um, ever. It won five Grammys. Of course, uh, Lauryn Hill famously was like 
why is this winning pop album of the year this is a rap album um first woman to to win uh, album of the year i think or to win that many grammys um first rap album to win album of the year uh and certainly uh groundbreaking in so many different ways and you can read about that and find out about it i highly suggest you listen to it if you have not i, I think one of the other reasons why they do these homage titles in in the um covers is because they can't use the actual name of the album i'm just guessing that because i think the miseducation of kamala khan would be a fabulous and perhaps more fitting uh commentary on what she's going through as a young superhero young muslim superhero uh than the education of kamala khan but i could be totally wrong just my own thought i am not a fan of DMX, but I cannot think of a better cover for All New Wolverine. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. That is so incredibly on point with a clone of you um, who is taking up your mantle in All New Wolverine. I mean, yeah, that is that is just really on point. Um, DMX is not my cup of tea, um, but this homage is just amazing. I haven't been seeing the artists. Hopefully you can read them in my graphics. That's Kieran Grant. Uh, number one, which I'd love more cred for being a Wu-Tang fan. I'd love to be like, oh yeah, I know the Wu-Tang. Um, because they're hip-hop and martial arts. And they're cool and they're nerdy and it feels like something I should be connected to. Um, but the honest truth is I'm not. I don't really know a lot about them. Uh, this was 2004, I believe. I've been missing some of the, the dates. Um, but yeah, I don't know much about Wu-Tang Iron Clan. I've listened to it. I like it. Um, but I just missed it back in the day. And the days are short. And there's things to do with the kids and the jobs and the family. I can't go back and learn all the hip hop that I missed. I'll have to just be stuck playing Run DMC and De La Soul. Uh, but here's another one that I'm um, <laughs> not too familiar with. Nicki Minaj, Pink Friday. Um, I, this song that I chose, uh, Super Bass, I, I know because it's a popular song. Um, and clearly by this point, hip hop and uh, pop music have, have grown a lot closer together. Uh, this is Angela Queen of Hell number one. Great Annie Wu cover. Um, I really dig Annie Wu. She did one of my favorite Miss Marvel um, variants. Don't see enough of her work. I'd love to find some more of it. Um, but yeah, musically, I'm not uh, the massive Nicki Minaj fan, but I think that she is quite serviceable for what she does. And, um, you know, that's all I have to say about that. Nothing against her, just not my personal favorite. Uh, somebody who I don't know anything about is Wiz Khalifa. Uh, Rolling Papers, very, very trance-style hip-hop, ethereal music. Um, the kind of music you want to listen to when you were getting stoned. Um, somebody told me. I don't know if that's true. Uh, so, yeah, he did this... Um, this great Vanessa Del Rey who loves working in dark um, colors and dark landscapes. Uh, this is the vision number one. And you know, one thing that's interesting here is this is also the first appearance of Viv and Vin Vision and of, uh, not Vivian, what is the wife's name? I can't remember. But, uh, you know, besides being a great hip hop cover, it's also a massively, um, not massively, it's also a very popular and important comic uh, in and of its own right. And one thing I should mention is the reason I'm doing this is because obviously these have blown up. Not, And it might not be obvious to you. I'm sorry about that. These have blown up. These have blown up recently. So this is a another time, another place category, but key collector app put hip hop variants on their front page earlier um, last week, like Wednesday or Thursday. And holy cow, you realize that some of these, um, some of these out, some of these covers are worth like $50 or um, this was listed at 200 the other day. And I was like, Whoa, went out and found it for $4. But um, yeah, I like to see that that goes for that price. It's crazy. Now, when Key Collector app puts these on their radar, 
are they just reporting the prices or are they making um are they inflating the prices i don't know uh everything miles has gone up and you can't blame key collector app for that but i was looking last night this is now listed in top condition as a 250 dollar book so it went up 50 dollars on their own app in the last four or five days and that could be reflecting the market i'm not i said that's a debate we can all have on another channel on another time another issue just wanted to point out why um I'm doing this in case you've been missing what's going on in the market um, and in the community. Uh, hip hop variant covers have become very, very relevant all of a sudden. And um, they've always been important, but they're becoming very relevant right now. So just thought I'd point that out. Uh, there is a history in hip hop of the mixtape. Um, really not tapes, CDs, and probably not even CDs, downloads now that are distributed of. Um, up and comers mixing their own music, mixing other music, rapping over beats, but not having a commercially produced and distributed album. In that vein, King Mez, Long Live the King, did that in 2015, and I would probably have never been aware of it had not Bill Sienkiewicz, remember him from Dazzler in 1984. This is a 2014, 2015 album, so 30 years later, Bill is still at the forefront cutting edge of things um, with this beautiful, beautiful homage right here. Really minimalistic. Um, what else can you say about Bill Sienkiewicz? We could do a entire video on just his stuff and perhaps somebody will someday. Uh, my family is a Hamilton obsessed family. My son can rap every single lyric. I was actually going to have him do that when I was originally going to play the music because I was under the impression that you could do your less than 30 second clips coming from the educational world. Um, we've done that with music and, and videos make for students, but apparently that is a misnomer. We've just gotten lucky. You can't do one second <laughs> um, and get away with it unless you're lucky. So uh, Hamilton, America, again, a beautiful um, inspired uh, homage. Um, nothing. If you haven't heard of Hamilton, you've been living under a rock. It is the hip hop Broadway um, musical sensation. Um, and this is a beautiful homage. There, this is one of the ones that actually went to a second printing. Um, just because it was so popular. And it's one of the ones that, that commands a lot of money. Some of the others, by the way, I'll take a s awkward sip of coffee, Discovery Bay. Some of the others that are um, commanding money are the Silk, uh, which Hudat has hooked me up with. Thank you very much, Hudat. Um, the Riri Williams, um, Invincible Ironheart number one, which is an homage to Missy Elliott, who's one of my favorites. And oh, I need that one. That's, that's the one that I need. I don't have all of them. Apparently, there's 146 or 47 of them out there. Um, and I don't have all of them and I don't want all of them. I think I'm going through about 40 maybe today. Uh, but I want that Riri Williams. Uh, now you might notice that my knowledge of more modern hip hop has been lacking, but one band that I do know and I am familiar with run the jewels. Um, the producer is he's LP E L dash P and killer Mike as the uh, lyricist or at least the MC. Um, and just an amazing band. They've got four albums out and all the albums have a variation of these fingers and these fists on them. Um, Run the Jewels number album two has the chain, which is what is referenced here in this absolutely brilliant, brilliant homage here for Black Panther number two. Um, I was, I love Run the Jewels. Uh, I highly suggest you listen to Walking in the Snow, Walking in Snow from their most recent album. They were slated to open up for Rage Against the Machine at the Tacoma Dome. Oh, two months ago, but you might have noticed something happened in the last couple months that uh, has stopped people from going to places to see concerts. So, oh my God, Run the Jewels and Rage Against the Machine. That would have been a show. Alas, third printing. That last one was the second printing. I do not have the first printing of this. I don't think I would pay huge money for it, but I definitely um, definitely would like to get this set because if you've got the second and third, it's always nice to have the first. Speaking of which, um, 
that was 2014's album. This is a 2015 album. Uh, the Future, DS2. I am totally unfamiliar. Not my style of music. Not something I'm, I'm too aware of or familiar with. But uh, Only in Humans, I think, did a really nice job on doing an homage to the Future's um, DS2 album cover, which apparently he got from a stock photo uh, of an artist who had dropped different colored inks in water and swirled them around. So it's a really cool little art connection there. And in no particular order, the final one I have here is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, uh, number one. One of my favorite covers, uh, just really minimalistic and beautiful. And this is an homage to Vince Staples' Summertime 06 album, which came out in 2015. Not in 06, it's more him looking back at uh, an earlier age, which I think is appropriate for uh, Miss Lunella Lafayette, if I got her name right, Moon Girl. Um, listen to the album. I think it's trash. I'm not down with Vince Staples, but that's just me. Maybe I'm an old. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I don't think I have any more. I kind of went through all my comics the other day. Looking, 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 looking. I believe that is the sum total of my hip hop covers. And uh, yeah, if I made any mistakes, let me know. If you have a favorite that I missed, let me know. If uh, you have any comments on anything that I did, let me know. I'm not a big like and subscribe guy. If you like me, thank you. If you're subscribed, great. If you want to subscribe, great. If you don't want to subscribe, that's okay too. Uh, I'm not not going after the thousand. And if I get there, I want to get there slowly on my own merits. Uh, so yeah, have a good day. And thank you so much for, for hanging out. It's been almost a half hour. It's actually been 31 minutes. Yeah.